court to my distinguished colleague, the Honorable Vikram Bharat, by making my contribution to the local content bill, bill number 21 of 2021. And Mr. Speaker, I would like to begin my contribution for the benefit of all those who are listening. This bill is designed to provide for the implementation of local content obligations on persons engaged in the petroleum operations or related activities in the petroleum sector. It is intended to prioritize Guyanese nationals and Guyanese companies in the procurement of goods and services for the enhancement of the value chain of the petroleum sector. It is designed to enable local capacity development to provide for investigation, supervision, coordination, and monitoring and evaluation of and participation in local content in Guyana. It is intended to promote competitiveness and encourage the creation of related industries that will sustain the social and economic development of Guyana and for other related matters. Mr. Speaker, I join with my colleagues who spoke earlier to endorse that this piece of legislation that we are debating today is a piece of legislation that makes some very bold statements, very bold statements. Bold enough to say that one, we welcome foreign direct investment we welcome foreign companies, including major oil companies, to Guyana. We welcome their investments and the opportunities that they bring. This piece of legislation is saying, we are welcoming you to Guyana. We are welcoming you to invest but we're not going to do so at the expense of Guyanese and Guyanese nationals. Mr. Speaker, it is also making a bold statement that Guyana is open for business, but the PPPC-led administration by President Dr. Irfan Ali, while we facilitate and encourage business in Guyana, we will fulfill our mandate in ensuring that Guyanese interests are served while we are in office. And this piece of legislation guarantees the Guyanese people of that. This piece of legislation that I stand to support that was brought by my honorable colleague says boldly to all Guyanese in the hinterland, in the riverine areas, and in the urban centers, our oil wealth must bring prosperity for all Guyanese. And mechanisms must be put in place, and we are putting those mechanisms in place to ensure that poverty is eradicated and that all Guyanese not only benefit from charity, but Guyanese must benefit from opportunities. You know, a, a while ago, I recall, Mr. Speaker, while we were in opposition and the AP and UAFC were in government, the big conversation was oil, oil money transfers, how much every family should get and how much the government should give to every person and the rest of it. This bill is beyond reaching out to vulnerable groups and providing transfers, this bill makes room for Guyanese to get involved in real opportunities where the sky is the limit. So it's not limited by a government transfer. 
entrepreneurs, Guyanese businesses, Guyanese companies, Guyanese who are interested in joining the, 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 the career of people for national development must be able to receive opportunities for the development of Guyana. We are facilitating development, not exploitation. So Mr. Speaker, as I make my contribution here today, I want to assure the Guyanese, all my brothers and sisters, wherever they are located and where they're listening from, that this piece of legislation, admittedly not perfect, but it is our first and best attempt at this time to provide a framework and safeguards to ensure that what I have just outlined becomes a reality for Guyanese. Why legislation and not just policy? Why not just a white paper? This bill highlights what ought to happen, how it should happen, and what are the consequences if it don't happen. And that is what is important. This is not just talk, but this bill carries with it the real teeth of enforcement. The Honorable Vikram Barrett, when he spoke in presenting the bill, reminded us that there are penalties ranging all the way up to $50 million for persons who don't comply with actions that are stated in this bill. The man in the street, members of the private sector, the ordinary worker, the young man who is graduating soon from university, those who are sharpening their entrepreneurial skills would ask the question, what is in it for me? Well, let me take time to tell you what is in it for you. This bill guarantees employment for Guyanese. Employment for Guyanese. You know, we came to government telling the nation that put us in office and we will create at least 50,000 new jobs. Mr. Speaker, I happen to be the gazetted minister with responsibilities from, for some sectors and agencies. And I can tell you as a result of oil and gas, what are some of the impact in terms of growth that is taking place in Guyana and why, these, why this bill is necessary to safeguard those jobs. Before oil and gas, we used to see about seven to 10 ships making a call at Port Georgetown on a weekly basis. Seven to 10 ships on a weekly basis. Today, we are making an average of 52 ships making calls at Port Guyana. Expansion in the maritime sector. With just one FPSO, in play right now and the service ships that have to go out and come in and the supplies and the rest of it there is major development it would appear that the contribution that was made by the honorable member mr patterson was thinking that guyana will remain a one fpso operation with 110,000 barrels a day offshore guyana and he's not thinking down the line about six or eight or 10 or 12 FPSOs that are, take, that, that are out there where we could come up to producing 1 million, 1.5 million barrels of oil per day. We have to look when you're making a framework of what is happening. We have a new development in Guyana in the aviation sector. Rotary craft have to be out and in 
of our airports, and that was it, one FPSO. When you have several offshore Guyana, more companies will have to come to Guyana to get people out and in using helicopter services and the rest of it. It means more people have to be fed, more people have to be accommodated, because when they're on rotations, there must be apartments, there must be places for them to stay. If they are apartments, these apartments need to be maintained, there needs to be landscaping, more people need fruits and vegetables, more people staying in hotels need tomatoes and cucumbers. We don't need the canned stuff coming to Guyana. We need our farmers to be able to provide their services to those places to ensure that they're getting part of the pie. So when we talk about employment, we're talking about the taxi drivers being able to provide transportation services. A man must be able to move. And that's what I want to say to the taxi driver. You must move from just merely a hustle trying to get a drop here. And you must be able to invest in several cars and provide executive services for the oil companies. And that must be for Guyanese, not a Trinidadian company coming to Guyana to provide that service to an oil company. It must be a Guyanese that is doing that. The service providers, whether it's hairs and nails and all the rest of it, it must be local people that are providing that. We must be able to create employment in every sector. So it's not just the people who are going on board. It's not just the people who are working on the supply vessels. It's not just the people who are directly linked to uh, operations offshore Guyana. More companies coming to Guyana, the Truly Sea and River Defense Board, we have offered at least eight no objections for development, for shore bases, and other facilities. There will be laid on yards. People would have to drive the forklift. People would have to work the trucks with the high arms. And there's a whole host of activity that will be taking place. And you know what we're saying? Don't take your eyes and pass Guyanese. That you're going to bring people from Ukraine and Argentina and Peru to do a job when there are Guyanese here in Guyana who could be trained and developed to do that same job. The PPPC administration is making a bold statement by the presentation of this bill today that we are safeguarding the employment opportunities that will become more and more available for Guyanese to benefit and for Guyanese to prosper in Guyana. And that is why everyone should support this bill. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, this bill guarantees skills development. It's a new sector. While we had rice and sugar and bauxite and gold and other labor-intensive activity that provided to our financial and economic development in the oil sector, there will be labor-intensive skills, but there are also high-level skills that have to be developed. And we want to ensure that our technical and vocational institutes our technical institutes, our University of Guyana, understand the need for these skills so that Guyanese could be trained and participate meaningfully in Guyana's development. This bill also provides to ensure the lo local procurement of goods and services. We are not in a bi-local campaign. But we are saying once things are available in Guyana, it must be purchased here and our farmers and our manufacturers and our agro-processors and those who provide those services must be able to get an opportunity. This bill provides and guarantees that there must be the building of capacity for local suppliers and contractors. I heard Mr. Patterson a little earlier talking about small contractors and there is nothing about 
facilitating those who just merely have a business registration uh, and a business name. Well, this environment that we are going into and where Guyana is going, you start there. But we must see several people coming together and forming conglomerates. We must see small businesses merging. While you compete, you complement and build capacity so that you'll be able to compete. And, and that's the fifth thing I want to emphasize that this bill will promote, and that it will enhance competitiveness. And whenever there is competition, two things you control. One, price, and second, quality. And Guyana will become a provider of high quality goods and services because we have to compete and we will ensure that the, that the, the tide rises in Guyana where quality is concerned. Quality in construction, quality in services, quality in the delivery. We must be able to see that happening. So I support this bill because of these reasons. Mr. Speaker, just allow me a few moments to conclude my presentation by rebutting something that Mr. Patterson said. Mr. Patterson said that this bill will see discrimination against Guyanese. The government will discriminate against Guyanese. It's either you don't comprehend or you don't read. This is regulating the private companies. The government will not be doing the hiring. We will have a, we will have a secretariat where there will be a register, where there will be monitoring and evaluation. It is the private companies that will have to hire, and we will check to ensure that they are in compliance. But he went on to say for the Mr. Speaker that we will see family and friends getting all the work. Well, I don't know if Mr. Patterson is aware of what is really friends and families, but I would like to remind him that in the acquisition and the procurement of the three metal to lead you weight in motion systems. Uh, this, this report that I still have from the forensic audit indicated that while he was minister and general secretary of the AFC, he handed a contract to the political advisor and the political strategist to the campaign of the APNU AFC. And up until now, those scales have not been delivered to Guyana. And that is what is called friends and family. I have the report here with me. So we must be careful when we say things like this. While I'm happy that Mr. Patterson, the Honorable Member, said that the opposition is supporting um, the bill, it would appear that his remarks are against people in the diaspora. We know that there are Guyanese who live in the United States, Canada, England, some countries in the Caribbean who have dual citizenship. They work out there and they want to invest. Guyana, we only have 750,000 people at home. Sooner or later, we will have to start coming to this National Assembly with a policy about immigration to facilitate labor in Guyana. And Guyanese must be able to be the first beneficiaries, whether they are at home or they are abroad. So the message to the diaspora, you are welcome home to participate in Guyana's development and Guyana's oil wealth. We say to all our colleagues in the diaspora, come home and participate. And finally, Mr. Speaker, finally, you know, this issue about this bill, one thing that stood out to me, and it is the fact not only Minister Barrett, as the Minister responsible for Petroleum, would have to have a register and do monitoring, but the bill sets out to do something that everybody should be proud about. The Secretariat has a responsibility to mount public education and awareness campaigns. And that is important because that must be able to tell the single mother that must be able to tell the people in the reverend communities in the hinterland how they could get registered, how they could participate, and how they could meaningfully benefit from this local content uh, legislation. Mr. Speaker, I lend full support to this bill. I call upon all of my colleagues who seem to be absent at this time, but may be listening, to support this bill. 
And certainly, the call for this bill to go to a special select committee is without merit. You go to a special select committee to do consultations. We have done the consultations before. It is already done. We know what are the grievances. We know what are the issues. We know what are the recommendations. And this piece of legis legislation represent the wishes in majority of the people of Guyana. And I ask that it be passed today and supported by all in this house. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Member, Mr. Bishop Juan Edgehill. The next speaker is the Honorable Member, Mr. Dionorain Ramsarut.